Yes, good God. So we are here and kicking it with Cool B and the great motivator here for part two of Blended Roses with one of the beautiful owners, Meg. Hey. This is part two because part one, we were speaking with Marlene, the other mo owners, co-owner, they partners, and she spoke about the services that are uh, offered in the spa that you ladies can come and get beautified. Now we're going to go into the purpose of blended roses, why it's called blended roses, and the, the premise that it stands on, the foundation that allow blended roses to be much more than a spa. <laughs> so, next. Hey, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. Good, 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 great. Fader. All right. Um, why don't you first introduce yourself to the people, and then I want you to talk about blended roses. Definitely. Um, hey, my name is May. I'm founder of Blended Roses, um, which is an umbrella for so many things to come. Um, we are visionaries with no boundaries. Um, women empowerment group for sure. We empower women all ages. You have a vision, we definitely will try, not try, you have a vision, come talk to us. And with resources and um, with connections and just with support, we'll help you get to it. Let me just ask you this. So well, tell them about blended roses. Why is the name blended roses? For me, roses are the most beautiful thing that God has created. And being that we are a women's empowerment group, we come in all shapes and sizes and colors. So that's where blended roses come from. Different color women, different ethnicity, different background, different, you know, um, morals and walks of life. Right. There you go. Different walks of life. So if you combine different colors of roses, it's a bouquet of blended roses. Yes. So that's basically where that concept was created about two and a half to three years ago. Now, that concept came about blended roses before the spa? That is correct. Okay. So what made you add a spa to the umbrella of bl blended roses? It was in my plan. It was definitely God's. Okay. So um, definitely God's plan. Um, yeah. It's usually the best plans. We usually think we know where we're going. Right. And it comes Hello. that's not the direction. No, at all. And get off that highway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> get off. You merge over here. So uh, that is one of our first ventures thus far. We have another in the making that we'll talk about. Um, Blended Roses started off as an event management company. Um, events, a lot of pop-ups from two and a half, maybe three years ago, we started doing pop-ups um, in the Brooklyn area with other brands in general, men and women. And, you know, we took a break from that probably about a year and a half ago, and I was still in the corporate world working. A really great, great friend of mine, um, Jay from Chicago, certified hustler, shout out to him. Um, it's just like, I know Blended Roses is going to do something May. Let it figure itself out. Don't stress yourself, like, what you're going to do with it? What am I going to do? Like, we're not doing anything with Blended Roses. I'm not doing anything with Blended Roses. What's going on? So, um, I just kind of allow God to just take control of the vessel. It's like, you know what? What's meant to be will be. What it's going to be, it's going to be. So, so this spa wasn't built off the fact of that little um, mishap. Oh, of course. Right, then, then you gotta get, yes, let's motivate yes, the people, yes. motivate them. Too. I was definitely getting to that, but yes, that is 100% why um, Blended Roses Beauty Bar came about. Um, I'm a woman that really is very much into self care, right? Um, you know, self care is mental, physical, as well as spiritual, and a chip toenail drives me crazy. So, my beautiful business partner, Mylene. Um, I started going to a spa that she was working at. Didn't love the customer service, but I loved my lean's service. She started coming to my home at that point to just service me. And how she literally touched me was that on my birthday, particularly, I hired her to come and I was running late. And mind you, like, this is my birthday. She's not inconveniencing herself, but this is her job or what, you know, she's doing. She shows up to my door with roses for me, not knowing that I loved roses or anything like that. 
So that really hit me in a special way where it was like... So that made y'all come together. It was so, a connection. So when this thing happened with this uh, Brooklyn nail so salon who fought the what? About a month prior to that, it was in August, and it was in August, and just listening, watching the stories and watching what happened, it was very disheartening. It was like, okay, this is something that I literally live by, and that's always getting my nails done, my feet done, my right. facial. Just watching these, you know, this family that frequents this spot go through what they went through because of a $5 misunderstanding disagreement baffled me. So immediately I said, and I have stood to that word since, they're not getting my money anymore. Right. They, and and that's, the, and let me just ask this. No. Okay. <laughs> so what... So now you are like, oh no, not my people. We have to do something, mm -hmm. right? Because in our community, in our culture, we're so used to complaining that we don't move. Yeah, exactly. You know, we would rather march than get down and get busy. Exactly. We would rather see. I than don't do understand. Work. I don't understand people that talk. Like, no. The only talking that needs to happen in any situation is basically solving the problem. We know what the problem is. Why we keep talking about the problem? Let's do something. Let's do something. Let's so that's what Blended on. Roses is about. Tell them about the do something. So Blended Roses came about. Um, Blended Roses Beauty Bar, Bar came about. Came right. about after I circulated. I made a list of six or seven black-owned salon spas. Right. I won't say no name. I personally frequented a few, and I passed flyers out. And when I went, it was just like some forgot I had an appointment. Some were just like. Hey, how are you? Have a seat. And I was just like, that's not cool. <laughs> right, right. So, Molly, do you want to just come to my house from here on out and do my services? And then that's when you and Molly uh, just decided to open this up. So, when was the uh, opening day? How long have you been in business? Uh, we've been in business roughly the 16th of that just passed. We, uh, was three months, our three month. Oh, so y'all, you guys are new, new. We're baby, baby. We're very new. Molly came over, and I sat there, and I told Molly, what do you want to do? And she was like, I think she was on my lashes or something like that. She's like, man, I've always wanted to open a spa. And I said, okay, let's do it. I don't do nails. I don't do. Right. I just like getting it done. I just don't do that. So we spoke about it. It was September 16th. By October 16th, we signed the lease on this space here. And by November 16th, which was Molly's birthday, was our first day. Ah, oh, on her birthday. What an anniversary. Yeah. Um, part one shows the spa. So please go over to our Instagram, Kubi TV. Go over to the YouTube. Uh, go over to the Great Motivator page. You will find the spa um, pictures um, there because we actually did a little video and also coming up with the great motivator sponsored by Kubi TV presented okay. by Blended okay. Roses. We are doing a women's celebration day here and it's going to it's going to go towards women talking to women about this problem or barrier we have with loving each other. So the event is called Heart to Heart. Okay, queens for queens, heart to heart discussion, and 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 we're gonna be here at Blended Roses in wait. Brooklyn, me either, because so you know what? Really quick, let me go into this. Mm -hmm. Um, I came here. I, I came out to Brooklyn. Kubi TV and the Great Motivator came to do something in the art exhibit yes. upstairs, yes. right? The gallery. The first day of Black History Month. Black, yeah, yeah, it was mm -hmm. for Black History Month. Very and powerful. let me tell you, ladies, something. Um, like, please, let me tell you, ladies, something about this. Um, I met May and Marlene and a whole crew at the table. Okay? Gang, gang, gang. And, gang, 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 gang. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the thing is this. When you are unapologetically you, you are fearless. So I was fearless about being me and I was loving. So that gravitated them towards me and me being able to gravitate towards them. And that just means we're fearless. Oh, that's yes, honey. That. We take it by that. Let's go. Right, that's what I'm saying. And and now it allowed us to come together and sit down and have this interview, bring our stuff together. But what I want to show the world out there is that this is what women are supposed to do. Hello, you feel me? Yes. No, this seriously. is what no uplift each other. Like if you're up there, put your hands down and grab someone else. Because in turn, 
they're supposed to grab someone else. It's literally being human. That is our first right here on earth is to be human. I literally tell people all the time, I'm not nice. I'm very kind. Mm. And kind is a human. It should be of every human nature. Of every human nature. Human property. That's mm -hmm. it. Be kind. Help one another out as much as you can. As much as you can. Especially when it doesn't cost you anything monetarily. Are you on, is Blended Roses outside of the beauty bar, right? Is Blended Roses empower, women empowerment group or something like that on Facebook or something where they can go to and be empowered and then in return um, penetrate or access all of the businesses coming up under the umbrella? Are you... Being that the beauty bar is our first venture, um, Jalila, who's also one of my event coordinators, she's basically um, doing the events. Our first one will be March 24th, and that is entirely an event for um, women empowerment. That'll be at the end of March. So from your mouth you know, to God's ears, that is the goal. The goal is to become... A foundation for women to push women. Um, our next venture is Tommy Ali under the Blended Roses umbrella. She's a 19 year old African American soulful singer of Jamaican descendant. She came to me. I saw something in her, and I basically tried my best to align her with people that's going to get her career to another level. You do management in the entertainment industry. That's yes, a part of Blended, Blended Roses. Yes, Real quick, speak yes, on that. that Blended is. Roses. So we have. Hold on. Blended Roses, the empowerment group. Yes. They do events. That's Jalil. Blended Jalila. Roses, Jalila. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Okay. Listen, you listen. Names are improper. Okay. <laughs> okay. The the Blended Roses beauty bar, Marlene That's and Mylene. you. Mylene, Mylene, and, Mylene. You. and not to cut you off. Mm -hmm. All of these ventures. I'm just, I just want to just say maybe I'm the curator. The bridge. Yeah, and that's theirs. That's their vision. You know, the beauty bar was my Mylene's vision. So, Blended Roses is just here to basically put our, yeah, exactly, put my our resources behind and push her. Mylene has a beautiful skincare line right now that she's working. I'm so proud of my team, you know, like it's so much more to come. Then you have Tommy Ali with her music. Blended Roses is pushing that. Our nail tech, Alicia, who's not here right now, she has her brand of polishes coming out. So this is what it's about. Jalila's always wants him to do events. So we're pushing that. What's next? What's next? Oh, the great motivator. Uh, hold on, my motivational speaking they platform. Know. Yes, public relations. They anybody got, anybody's a PR, yes, get at me. They got me and Cool <laughs> BT, did, yes, good God. There you go. Uh, so... so Listen, also, before we go, I also want to touch on that Blended Roses is very politically involved and, and aware. And so, we... So sorry. Oh. How can I forget? Thank you. Blended Roses Apparel. Sorry. How can I forget? So, we have a line of... Um, um, that crop hoodie. Uh -huh. And could you bring us the, 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 the fist t-shirt while she hold that on one side and I hold one on the other. So Thank we're you. developing our apparel line right now, which is what we started doing even with the pop-ups, as I mentioned. Even with the pop-ups that we were doing about two and a half years ago, we had the clothing line. So we're now we're really into like the branding process. Um, that is definitely a vision for me because I love fashion. And as opposed to, even right now, it's so crazy with everything that's going on with the whole Louis Vuitton and everything else. Gucci and all that. And all right. of that stuff. It's crazy because I really want to migrate to just really supporting really dope black designers that are out there. Like, their designs will are above par of what, you know, people are buying from Gucci and, 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 and all these different brands. They have them. So, yes, that is also another one of Blended Roses. Um, yeah, really quick, we're about to wrap up. Give them your uh, social media contact handles. Definitely. Um, my personal for any contact for any brand is at Blended Roses May. B-L-E-N-D-E-D -E -E Roses May. M-A-E. And the beauty bar is Blended Roses Beauty Bar. The apparel is Blended Roses Apparel. And the management is just Blended Roses. And also give us hours for the Blended Roses Beauty Bar. The Beauty Bar is open Sunday through Wednesdays from 11 to 8 p.m. And on Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays, it's from 10 to 10. On Sundays, 
great brunch activities. We have a great brunch that includes mimosa, a spread of like wonderful juiciness. And the mimosas. Uh, oh, and the mimosas. Yes. I'm yes. sorry, I have any creatures. No, that's okay. Mimosas but they great. need to come in. Oh, they oh, God. God. That, that was so delicious. Sad. We're going to blame Molly because I was yes, going to Yes, we're going to blame her. Yes. And <sighs> then <laughs> we have our margarita Thursdays. And then we have um, a lot of events that we bring down here for like. You know the community for people to just come it's a ladies cake but we do also welcome the gents also so with that being said um thank you thank you thank, thank you, you so much. thank you so much for um listening to may's uh part two her story it is a story it's and her story definitely. about blended roses and all the things that are coming up from under that umbrella i want to thank you for kicking it with kubi and the great motivator and thank and you so much. then, um, for you, this is what I would like you to do. Mm -hmm. I want you to say your name, mm -hmm. say a blended beauty, a blended roses mm -hmm. beauty bar, mm -hmm. and then I want you to say and thank you for kicking it with Kubi. Hey, hey, hey! This is May with Blended Roses, and I want to thank you for kicking it with Kubi and the great motivator. Yes. Hey everybody, this is Kicking It With Kubi with the Great Motivator. Yes, good God. We are here in Brooklyn and we are kicking it with our future council member, Anthony Beckford. What, what um, district you running for, Anthony? Um, district 45, which is uh, Flatbush, East Flatbush Marine Park in Flatlands. Okay, so he is running for District 45 in Brooklyn. So all you Brooklynites, please go out and make sure you vote for Anthony. Um, So Anthony, thank you for kicking it with Kubi, number one, and yeah. the great motivator that he made. Yes, good Lord. <laughs> and please introduce yourself and then talk about who you are. Uh, well, I'm Anthony Beckford. I am a single father, um, Marine Corps veteran, community advocate, you know, um, many things, you know, when it comes to the community, you know, your brother, your father, you know, your, your community member, you know, your ally, your comrade, your mentor, you know, um, I'm a person that I don't move alone. I move with the people, you know, and what I do is not for myself, it's for the people. You know, especially when it comes down to, you know, community issues, you know, within housing, health care, immigration and so forth, especially in, within my district. But then also throughout the black community and whole, no matter where you're living in Brooklyn or throughout New York City. Anthony, what made you want to get into this game called politics? Man, uh, everything, everything that's wrong, you know, with politics, you know, there is no black politics. There is no black agenda in politics. There is lip service about Black Agenda, but there's no action on making it happen. You know, so myself being outside of the corporate run, you know, entities out there, myself being grassroots to the fullest, you know, I decided let me bring the movement into politics. One, to shake things up. Two, to basically demolish the foundation that this um, system is created on, which is systemic racism, you know, and bias, you know, and then basically to rebuild the structure that we need as a people and for our communities to rebuild and become empowered. Um, and tell the people, if you become council member of District 45, what does this do for them as well as surrounding districts? I would put it like this. Um, it's, a it's, a, it's like a connection that we all have because what they do is they divide the districts, but then people in certain communities feel, well, the fact that you don't represent me, I, you know, you really have nothing to do with me. But all that is, that's just politics. You know, like I said, I'm an advocate and an activist that's in this political arena. So I'm about basically mending everybody together, bringing a unified front, you know, making the politics into a movement itself. You know, because you have people who are just like us, have the same melanin as us, you know, but they don't have the agenda that is for us. You know, where I come with my whole um, phrase of not every skin is kin. You know, so at the end of the day, there has to be somebody that's, there to represent us, you know, no matter where we're at. So what I'm doing in these Flatbush and Flatbush Marine Park and Flatlands, that also will have a trickle effect over to Crown Heights, Bed-Stuy, you know, um, Brownsville, you know, the, wherever we live, it is to have an effect there because it's about true representation. Mm -hmm. So just because I represent a district doesn't mean that I stop representing people. Right, exactly. Nice, nice. Yes, let's give that a hand. <laughs> um, with what issues are you um, owning in on? Um, definitely the number one one is housing. You know, I could give you anything else in the world, 
But if I don't give you housing, what have I done for you? Mm -hmm. You know, so um, not this affordable housing that the mayor is talking about with 421A, you know, not everything that's going on with the developers. No, not none of that. I'm up for a true affordable housing, and which is why I emphasize true when in front of my platform and so forth like that, because it's about the truth, which everybody else is telling lies about. So when they tell you, well, you know, we're going off of medium income. So the medium income that they're going off of when it comes to our rent is based off of all five boroughs. Plus, you're looking at Rockland County, Nassau County, and Westchester County. I went to college in Westchester County. Put it like this. When the pizza slice costs $5, imagine what the rent costs out there. Right, you right, know, So, right. you know, we're looking at that. So if you're determining our income off of these counties, which are the richest counties in New York State, that has nothing to do with us. So what I'm doing is pushing affordable housing based off of your zip code. Okay. So, you know, so if you live in 11210, 11226, whatever your medium income is for that community, that's what we go off of. And we're not talking about gentrifier, just move in a year ago, a few months ago, income. We're looking at the whole, you know, um, zip code um, that's going on there when it comes to, the, you know, medium income. So right now, flat is flat is the medium income is anywhere between, I'll say, 18000 to 28000 Okay. And that's a wide gap. But yet still, you have people who are just, matter of fact, they're not even just making ends meet, they're surviving. I'm here to stop making the people survive and make some, actually make them start living. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the platforms um, for affordable housing um, that I'm pushing is my housing justice bill. And the number one thing in that is rent rollbacks. New York hasn't had a rent rollback since 1971. A lot of people don't even understand what a rent rollback is. You know, I explain to people like this. If your rent is 1800 how would you like to only pay 1200 if your rent is twelve hundred, how do you only like to pay eight hundred? You know, this way you're able to afford your rent, but then also be able to not not have to decide between putting a meal on the table for you and your children or paying your Getting rent. Getting the basic necessities, food, exactly. clothing, and shelter, you are able to handle. Everything else is a luxury, right? Exactly. Okay, so let's when um when is the elections for you? So the election is in twenty twenty one. Um, being the fact that we just did our uh, voting reforms, and we're able to merge, you know, um, state, local, and um federal um, elections together for June, which is a good thing. But if Jamani Williams wins his public advocacy on February 26th, which is next Tuesday, he'll actually be opening up his city council seat. So that means basically I get to take that seat, you know, and the reason why by votes, I, by votes. Okay. and the reason I say take that seat, because nothing's ever going to be given to somebody like myself, right. who's from the community, who fights for the community. Right. It's going to be given to those who basically are the, predecessors and the puppets of other elected officials, those who are controlled by corporations, those who are controlled by the mayor who basically just wants to keep gentrification rolling through our communities to displace black and brown families at a record rate. People like me have to take it. You know, liberation is not given to us. Right. Liberation is not given to us. We have to take it When back. it was given to us, we, we denied it, right? That was the Lord. Uh, okay, but well, we <laughs> uh, Listen, let me, uh, listen. Yeah. Also, let me just ask you this, because I kind of got thrown off. Excuse me, yeah. forgive me. <laughs> um, what, okay, so if he gets the public advocacy, will there be a special election before June? Or well, that is, would be well, the special election? If there's a special election, which the mayor has to call it after a certain amount of time after the winning this special election here, which would be a record, because this would be, the, my fact, February 26th is the first special election that New York City's ever had. Okay. And this would be the second special election that New York City would ever have. And the special election more likely would be in April. But then we'll still have to return in June for a primary and then in November for um, for a general election. Are you preparing the people to go out and back you on what you need to be oh. uh, backed on? Oh, definitely. Because, um, like I said, you know, housing was just one of, you know, one of the uh, platforms, you know, but there's also education. I'm the lead advocate for Black History Education, which is the Black History Education Bill, which basically creates a year-round curriculum of Black history in all of our schools. You know, not just for black students, for everybody. Right. Because you taught us all this other history, which is really not our history, and most of it is watered down history, most of it is lies. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not we're not indentured servants and we're not migrant workers. You right. know, and also we're not descendants of slaves. You know, so the whole curriculum will be based on teaching the children about their greatness, so that way they know how great they are, so that way they can strive to become great again. Okay. You know, because we have to bring back the leaders. And the reason we don't have leaders is because of the conditioning that's put in the education system. You know, and the way this Black History Education Bill works, it will basically go from um, grades K to 12. How do they learn um, about what you're doing to support your council member? You know, give them your social media um, handles, how they can on, contact you. Yeah, 
on Twitter, it's uh, Vote for Beckford, so that's V-O-T-E, the number four, B-E-C-K-F-O-R-D. On Facebook, it's Anthony Beckford for City Council, so that's, that's Anthony Beckford, the number four, City Council. Um, same thing with the IG. Um, basically, even, even, even if you just Google my name, you're going to see everything that I've been doing, um, you know, especially when it comes to Black History Education. Um, I'm also the leader of the Cop Watch Patrol Unit, so you'll see, well, the Brooks Sector, Cop Watch Patrol Unit, so you see what we're doing in regards to police accountability and criminal justice reform. You know, I'm also the president and co-founder of Black Lives Matter Brooklyn, so you see everything that we're doing there because literally we're the only grassroots chapter, but then also we're the only ones that's actually going into politics to basically bring an agenda of the people to politics. Well, we're going to come back and visit you after the the, the the special elections and see if you got the public advocacy. Let's, we're going to walk the people through because that's what Definitely. people don't do. But I also want to say this, um, just going off back, I want to let you guys out there know, all black and brown people, listen, stop putting out people in the belly of the beast and then you walk away. Okay, mm -hmm. that's something. See, I, I let him to talk about what he needs to do from that side, but now I'm, I'm the people confronter. Okay, I'm going to confront the people because what we like to do is we like to complain, but we don't like the work. We like the fruit, but we forget about the labor. Yeah. And see, mm -hmm. that's the problem. So if he is out there and he's in the belly of the beast and he needs you when he's in Albany, how about you have all these buses go to Albany to support him? Listen, you cannot put somebody someplace and tell them to do your shopping and then get mad, but they don't come back with all your groceries, okay? So mm -hmm. I'm going to need everyone to be a part of the movement. I need you to be active in the movement. It's Anthony Beckford for City Council, District 45. We are talking about housing and education. We need you to show up, show out, and be there continuously while he's fighting for you. Amen? Amen. Exactly. Amen. Okay, <laughs> this is what I would like to say. I have to close it out because you know people need to be checked. <laughs> so I want to close it out, and I want you to say, first of all, I want you to say, my name is Anthony Beckford. I'm at Blended Roses, okay. and I'm kicking it with Cool B TV and the Great Movie. Okay, cool. you ready? Yes. Let's go. Hit it. How y'all doing? This is Anthony Beckford, running for City Council District 45. I'm at Blended Roses, kicking it with Kubi TV and a great motivator. Yes, good God. Woo.